If you're studying computer networking, then you know you'll be required to understand subnetting and how to create IP addressing schemes and convert subnets and work out hosts, ranges, etc. And part of that process is being able to convert a binary number to a decimal number. Binary is a base two numbering system. And so to be able to convert numbers, you do need to understand the powers of two. So if we looked at the values of these numbers, two to the power zero is zero, two to the power one is one, two to the power two is four. And so you're looking at here doubling numbers, two times two equals four. Two to the power three is eight. So two times two times two. Two times two is four times two is eight. So that's how you work it out. And you're simply doubling numbers. So 16, 32, 64, 128. You keep going, 256, 5112. So 256, 5112, 1024. 2048, 4096. So in subnetting, this is the, the basic maths that you need, being able to work out powers of 2 and then basic um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. This, in effect, is your byte. That's the byte positions. This is the values of a byte. So if I was to put a number into a binary number into this byte, Anything with a 1 in it is on, if you like. So you simply have to take the values. So there's a 32 and 128 and add them together. So this binary number here has a decimal value of 160. So let's look a little bit more at some examples. So here's a binary number. Now, how do you convert that to decimal? You look at the place values of each of the ones. So wherever there's a one, you look at the place value and you note that down. So everywhere there's a one, we're going to write the place value. And then you add them up. So you've got 96 plus 4 is 100 plus 1 is 101. All right, here's another example. Everywhere there's a one, we add that value, so 128 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2. Add the decimal numbers up, so we've got 160. It's 128 plus 132 is 160 plus 26. 26, 186. How quickly you do these conversions depends on your maths ability. I'm uh, not able to take those numbers. 1, 2, 8, plus 32, plus 16, plus 8, plus 2, and add them up in my head straight away. I have to write them all down. And in my experience in subnetting, that often that's not a bad thing to do because you can be adding up in your head and simply be out one or two numbers because you've made simple mistakes. So your maths ability will determine how you convert these. I'm just doing it the way I know how, uh, without using a calculator, by the way. You have to be able to do this process without using a calculator with pen and paper, or if you're lucky enough to have a good maths brain in your head. All right, third example. So wherever there's a 1, you look at the value. So I've got 16, 8, 4, and 1. So 16 and 8 is 24, plus 4, 28. Plus 1, 29, so that converts to 29. The smaller the numbers, the easier my maths is. Right, another example. And as you get quicker at it, there's no need to keep writing the numbers down underneath. So I don't need to really do this anymore. I can simply look at the numbers. So I can say there's a 1 and a 1 and a 1, so I'll add those up. So 128 plus 64 plus 32 is, is 224. And the more subnetting you do, the easier you will learn the subnet mask values, which are essentially what this is. This could be a subnet mask. We've got one here, so it's 225. The last example. 
So I've got a 128 and a 32, which I know is 160. Then an 8 and a 2, so it's 10. So this one is 170. So if you're confronted with a binary stream like this, and we know it's an IP address because it's got the, the little dots here. So each one of those is an octet. And this is how the router sees an IP address. And to convert that, eventually you're going to sort of know what the bit values are. So by looking at the first two ones, I know that's 192. But until you're at that stage, you have to use the uh, a little bit of scratch paper and just write down the numbers. So the first two are ones. And that's 192. Because we look at the values, 128 plus 64 is 192. So the first octet is 192. Now take the second binary number, put it into your scratch into your scratch paper. So I've got 128 plus 32, so it's uh, 160, and an 8, so it's 168. So if you're doing this in an exam, you need to be able to do it quite quickly. So the more you practice, the faster you can get, even if it means writing numbers out like I'm doing over here, writing the numbers out. So that's 168. The third one. Thirty-two and eight is it forty? Third octet is forty. And in the last one, there's only a one in that third last bit. So if you look at it that way, you can see it's a four. But to be sure, just write them all down into your byte so you don't make a mistake that one's a four so that IP address from binary is 192.168.40.4 it's very easy to make a mistake by simply looking at that octet and thinking oh I think that's a, a four and it, maybe it's an eight because you've miscounted all the zeros so until you get experienced at it it's no the, the best thing I've found when I've been teaching students is to write them down. When you're working out subnet masks, you can create a little table like this to learn. And the more subnetting you do, the easier it is to recognize bit patterns. So if you were doing a, a subnet mask, which was 255.255.248.0, the 255 is just all ones. And so if you put all ones in this chart and then you look up at the bit positions at the top and you add them all up, then that is 255. 248, if we come down here, 248 means that the first five bits are ones, are on, and the last three bits are zeros, have no value. So adding up the first five is 248. And so when you have to work out a subnet mask in binary, then you use this little table. And one of the things that I always write down when I go into an exam is this table. So let's just finish off the table. So if you had a 128 value, which means your first bit is on and the rest of them are zeros no value. 192 means the first two bits are on and as you start seeing binary addresses you start to recognize bit patterns. So one and one I know is 192. 224 the first three bits are on and the rest are zeros. 240 the first four bits on the rest are zeros. 252, first six, and 254, first seven. And you can start to see a pattern there as well as we go up. See that diagonal line as we go up a bit. These are the subnet mask values. So how might you use a table like this? If I had a an IP address such as 192.168.10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
0.0 and I'm trying to submit that address and I need to borrow four bits from the last octet from the host octet and then come up with a new subnet mask. The first three octets are all networks, so the first three octets will be 255.255.255. In the fourth octet, I want to borrow four bits from the host octet, so I can look down here at four, I'm borrowing four, they're going to become network bits, so my subnet mask will be 240. The, the topic of this video is not to actually teach you subnetting, but that's how you would use a binary table to help you with your subnetting. So learning this table becomes very important. Understanding how we got those numbers is very important. Uh, I do have another video on how to convert from decimal to binary, so look in the description for that video. That's all for this video.